Hello, I'm Vivian McGrath, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about codependency recovery, understanding love addiction. Because I get so many emails and messages every single day, and I get asked the same question over and over again. Why do I still love them? Why do I feel so sorry for them? Sorrier for them than myself? Or guilty? Why do I feel so guilty? And this is usually after somebody has been discarded and rejected by a narcissist, and they've just dumped them, or they've found the courage to leave an abusive relationship, but perhaps are still struggling to do so because they still, even though they know the relationship is no good for them and hurts them, they still love them. And they ask me, you know, why, do, why is it I still love someone who hurts me, who abuses me? Why do I feel so sorry for them, even though I know that this relationship is no good for me? And that's because codependency is a very, very complex thing. I didn't even know I was codependent um, in my relationship with an abusive ex. I just thought, you know, he needed me to save him from his demons. He needed me to fix him. I saw him as someone who was damaged and I thought, well, he needs me to, to fix him. And um, I, I, I sort of, I fell in love with this really, really charismatic, wonderful guy, the guy that he first showed me at the start. But that wonderful charismatic person, um, uh, who I, I I saw at the start made me think he was worth trying to save and fix and help him rescue him from his demons. But then that lovely, gorgeous, charismatic side started to get less and less and less. And this darker side of him started to come out more and more and more. And so in a way, um, the, the high that I got at the beginning, I craved it when the dark side appeared. I wanted that nice person back. I wanted the high. So I, I did everything in my power to try and get that nice person back. I changed my behavior, thinking that if I could change mine, it would change him. I forgave him for abuse um, because I put it down to his troubled past, all sorts of things like that. And I became um, addicted, if you like, to getting that nice person back and getting that high again. Now, the definition of um, codependency is when you have an excessive reliance or dependence on somebody who has their own um, uh, addictions and are themselves in the need of support. And in a way, um, that's what I was. I became excessively reliant on my ex um, who did have his own addictions and need for support. Or in my definition, I became addicted to a guy who was emotionally unavailable because he had his own addictions that he could barely deal with, let alone deal with me. And I was addicted to him in an unhealthy way. So in order to, to recover from codependency, it's really important that you know what some of the signs of codependency are. The first one is low self-esteem, which I didn't even realize I had. I always thought I was self-confident, high in self-esteem, that I was the strong one. And everybody told me that I was. My friends all said, you're the strong one. And I was really shocked when I looked hard at myself and asked myself the question, why did I stay in this abusive relationship when other women would have run a mile? And what I found was this frightened little girl inside me that didn't feel good enough. There's been a study, the Dove Self-Esteem Project has done a study on, I think, 13 countries and more than 10,000 girls and found that seven out of 10 of those girls didn't feel good enough. And that can be one of the factors that leads you as an adult to go into a dysfunctional and codependent relationship. 
People pleasing is another sign. And oh my God, I was so good at that. I was so low in self-esteem that I would morph into whoever I thought somebody wanted me to, to be. I'd have an opinion that I thought they would approve of. I was too scared to say no when I should have, and I just said yes instead, even though I didn't want to at times because I feared confrontation. Um, so I people please, I wanted to be liked, I needed to be liked. And as a result of that, I also had very weak boundaries. I didn't know how to say no um, and stand up for myself. I let others push through those boundaries. And if they did, I just shifted my goalposts over what I would accept and allow, which signaled to them that I was weak and they could push the next boundary down. And so my ex did that repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly. And I showed him that I was weak and insecure and he could control and manipulate me. And codependents are also um, people who react rather than responding. By that I mean um, we react to others and we change our behavior according to others because when you're low in self-esteem, you can't find happiness within. You depend on others for that happiness and your happiness and moods depends on that of others. So how, how you feel about yourself is a reaction to others rather than if you were very high in self-esteem and had strong boundaries, you do the opposite, which is you choose how you want to respond to other people. And there's a very, very big difference in that. And what happens is when you're constantly reacting to others, not responding, um, quite often because you fear confrontation, you don't stand up for yourself and you end up internalizing that pain and pushing it down and you end up numbing yourself. And that's not good for you because at some point that's got to come out or maybe it doesn't and you internalize it and you end up getting ill, some sickness that eats away at you. Another sign of codependency, codependency is the need to rescue others. And you feel the need to be needed. So you find somebody that you deem is needy of you, that you can rescue. And, you know, I can see through their damaged past and I'm the one who can save them and turn them into the person I believe they are. The person that they showed me at first, which is the loving, wonderful person. And when you go into rescuing them, you also, as I said earlier, start to ignore that dark side of them because you think, well, that's not the real them. That's not really them. The real them is that loving person that I saw a glimpse of at the start and now I can't find so often, but I, you know, I can bring that person back. I'm the one who can save them and turn them into that fantasy person actually that's in your head because the true person really is the darker person. That wonderful, gorgeous person is just the mask they wear to fool you. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. And that, the reason we do that, the reason we uh, rescue and um, uh, want to save other people is because we actually, as codependents, have a need for control. And while we are magnanimously being the martyr and putting our needs last, and theirs first because we're rescuing them and saving them from themselves. We can control them. And the reason we need to do that is because then while we're controlling somebody else and that's making us feel good about ourselves because actually we're not being magnanimous. We're doing this rescuing bit because actually we need to feel in control because it makes us feel safe. 
And the reason we're in control and feel safe is because we can think, well, while I'm controlling this person who is needier than me, then I can fool myself into thinking there's nothing wrong with me. I'm in denial. I'm perfect. Nothing wrong with me. They need me. I'm not the problem. It's them. So we can hide from ourselves. And we do this because we actually have an, a fear of abandonment. When your, your emotional needs are not met as a child, you know how painful that is. And as an adult, you fear that feeling of abandonment you had as a child. So you do everything to not feel that. And the way to feel um, safe and secure and not be overwhelmed by that fear of abandonment is being in control of somebody who needs you to rescue them so that you can deny that there's anything wrong with you and um, while that person in your head is deemed to be damaged and need you well then they're never going to leave you so that assuages your fear of abandonment and the other, the other thing with codependence is our self-worth depends on other people. We can't find happiness within. We're looking to another person to fulfill our needs and make us feel happy. And choosing someone who we think is weaker than us, needy of us, makes us feel good about ourselves and makes us not face the facts which is actually that we need saving ourselves and that actually inside we are just as damaged just as insecure and needy as they are so our self-worth worth depends on others and we can also um, develop this obsessiveness this obsessiveness about needing to fix them control them rescue them and you know if i just do this then then they will change into that fantasy person I've got in my head. If I do that, then I'm going to make the relationship amazing. We obsess over what we could have done differently. And if I'd only done that, then they wouldn't have abused me. If I could do this better, then they won't leave me. Obsessive, obsessive, obsessive. And we go over our behavior repeatedly thinking, if I just can change this, then I will change the outcome. We get very, very obsessive. We also are in denial, not only for the fact that we are actually insecure inside and we are in need of saving ourselves and healing and rescuing and all that, that we have low self-esteem. We are in denial of how bad the abuse has got in that abusive relationship because we fool ourselves into thinking that um, they really are this wonderful, beautiful, charismatic person we first met. And that all they need is for us to prove and love them, prove that we're worthy and love them more than anyone has loved them before in their past, then everything is going to be okay. We go into denial when we first meet them about the red flags and warning signs that they show us. We see them but we just overrule them in our heads um, and minimize them. And all of this is because we have a fear of vulnerability. If we have a person that we can control, that is a person who is weaker than we are or needier than we are in some way, then um, uh, not only do we think they won't leave us, but um, we can also play this role of martyr and rescuer. But we go into a dysfunctional, unhealthy relationship with somebody that can't be rescued or controlled and is very damaged and will abuse and hurt us. But then what happens is they push us away before we get too close to them because they can't deal with a normal, functional, healthy relationship, and neither can we. So they will sabotage it before they get too close to us. And that suits us fine too, because subconsciously, if they get too close to us, they might see who we really are, that person that we've been hiding from because we're people-pleasing all the time. 
um, we're just morphing into a chameleon where, where whoever anyone wants us to be, we don't want to reveal the true us because we don't want people to find out that we're actually flawed, we're insecure, we're not good enough, that fear of not being good enough. And if they did get close to us in a healthy relationship, a normal functional relationship, it terrifies us because what happens when they find out who we really are? They might reject us. And that goes back to our fear of re abandonment from, a ch from childhood where we felt rejected as a, as a child and we don't want that hurt all over again. And weirdly, we've chosen somebody whose baggage ma matches ours, who also fears vulnerability. And we both choose a relationship that we're never going to be able to get close to each other because um, we're just not healthy adults and we're looking to the other to make I'm looking to him to make me happy he's looking to me to make him happy we cannot find happiness within ourselves and the problem with that is vulnerability allowing yourself to be vulnerable and show somebody who you really are and in a healthy relationship where they don't take that vulnerability and use it as a weapon against you to hurt you, allowing yourself to be vulnerable, trusting another person with that vulnerability, and as I said, if they don't hurt you with that, is the only way to truly develop the closeness you need to grow and sustain a really healthy relationship. Without that, being able to be vulnerable and trust and get close, then you'll just stay in this relationship that will never fulfill your needs. So we have this fear of vulnerability, but in the end, it is that fear that stops us finding a relationship that is long-term and will ultimately make us truly happy. I've done another video on that about true love and relationships, so I'll put a link to that below. And codependents also find themselves in relationships where love hurts. Um, it's painful, you know, and that's because we are addicted to somebody, as the definition says, uh, we're codependent, we're addicted to somebody who cannot fulfill our needs because they're addicted to their own um, things, whether it's drug, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, addiction um, food, whatever it is. Um, they have their own issues that need support and we become... Uh, excessively dependent upon them and addicted to them and we get to the point where they are the only things person who can make us feel good about ourselves again because we have not got happiness within we cannot find it within because we're low in self-esteem and we look to them to make us happy but they can't because they just can't even cope with their own issues. So I hope that makes sense, that that's what codependency is. And the reason you love somebody who still hurts you, the reason you feel sorry for them is because um, you have become addicted to chasing the high of that person who love bombed you at the start and told you they were the, you were the only person they ever needed in their life. And um, they hooked you in with that love bombing. And only once you were hooked in and um, feeling secure and safe, did they start to bring that cycle of abuse in to test your boundaries, to see how much you would accept. So you get hooked into this cycle of abuse. You then become addicted to that person who is dysfunctional, will never fulfill your needs. And you're 
happiness in the end totally depends on t depends on them and you crave them like a drug you need them to say i love you it'll all be okay because then you'll feel good about yourself and you feel sorry for them you feel guilty for them because you've not your 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 self esteem is completely shot you no longer put your needs above theirs you put theirs totally and utterly above your own to the point where you do feel sorrier for them even after they've abused you than you do for yourself you feel guilty for them you desperately go back to them because leaving them hurt so much and you just crave that high from them again just one more hug just one more time of them saying i love you will make you feel all right again until the cycle of abuse starts to go around and around again so chances are if you are um leaving a narcissistic or abusive relationship struggling to do so if they've discarded you and you feel sorry for them you feel guilty for them you still love them even though you know they're no good for you and that relationship hurts you then chances are you are codependent and this is a codependent relationship you need to get help and support by every self help book you can find and i've got a list of them on my blog www.beingunbeatable.com uh under the my best self help book guides to 2018 um read everything you can on codependency get help and support and i've listed resources on there as well um ring those free anonymous helplines get help and support to understand the dynamics of codependency and how to break it because it's not a healthy relationship it's dysfunctional and you are never ever ever going to find long term happiness that way I was codependent for many years and I broke that cycle. I'm now in a very healthy functional relationship and we've just celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary. So I now know the difference between a healthy relationship and a codependent one. I no longer have low self-esteem. I no longer people please. I no longer react. I choose how I wish to respond. I um my self worth doesn't depend on others i can find happiness within me without needing others to make me feel good about myself and i no longer fear vulnerability so in my relationship with my husband now i can be vulnerable with him i can show who i really am even if i'm weak and not feeling strong i can reveal all my flaws to him and he loves me no matter what so i've built trust with him and we've got that closeness you need to sustain a long-term healthy relationship. So you can break the codependent cycle and I really really urge you to do so because oh my god love doesn't have to hurt. Relationships should enhance your life, make your life beautiful, not hurt you. So I hope that's helped. If it has please uh click like subscribe and share and I look forward to seeing you in my next video